Hello, everyone. This is Matt Hoots with Radic Green, and we've all been told over the last year to ventilate, ventilate, ventilate. What does that even mean? Um, does that mean we need to go out there and buy a ventilator so we can breathe better? Because when you do a Google search, I mean, that's what shows up half the time as a hospital ventilator, but that's not what the experts are talking about. They're talking about bringing in fresh air, clean air into the structure, but also getting rid of bad air out of the structure so you, the occupant, can breathe better. So I've got an expert here. Joseph with April Air, and they do have some ventilation systems that he is going to talk about to make your air cleaner or at least bring in some fresh air um, so you can breathe better. Great. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, um, you know, I, uh, we've all talked about this uh, that are in the industry, but it's been um, exciting to see ventilation talked about in the mainstream press in the last year. It's, you know, something that if you're in the building community or the HVAC community, you're aware of it. But um, as you pointed out, when consumers think of ventilation or a ventilator, they're, they're usually thinking of a personal device in a hospital, <laughs> not, um, not something that's actually an important uh, part of their home. So, you know, and the, the funny thing about ventilating a house is it's something we've been doing long before we had mechanical systems. I mean, you know, the most uh, easiest type of ventilation is just open a door or a window. I mean, you're going to get air in the house that's going to replace the air that's already in the home. Getting air in the home, uh, you know, from that standpoint is not necessarily difficult, but it's not controlled in, in any way. And that's really what we're trying to do uh, with, with intelligent ventilation and balanced ventilation is make sure that we maintain control over the energy efficiency and the quality of that air that we're bringing in. We're trying to improve the indoor air quality in the home. So the air from the outside that we bring in needs to be uh, obviously cleaner than the air that's already in the home. So, yeah. you know, again, that's why there's thought that goes into exactly where the air is, is coming into the home, how it's being exhausted out, what systems in the home also play a role in this. Um, we've of course got our, you know, friends in the, um, uh, energy rating sectors and like that, that will, you know, come into a house and, and look for where leaks are. And again, that will all, you know, play a role in what type of a system you ultimately choose. But from a very broad level, um, you know, we, we want a system that is bringing that air in from the outside. And, and if you can utilize a central HVAC system that can also move it through uh, filtration before it's brought into the living space. So again, that's another advantage we have of it is that we've got that purity that we've talked about before, filtration system that we've talked about before. You can take that ventilated air and, and put it into there. So, you know, as, as you move from down the line, you've got just open a window, open a door, then you get to maybe a dampered solution, which is something that's going to utilize the central HVAC systems fan with a damper that open and closes. So when it's ready to ventilate, it will open and, and bring that outdoor air in and, and you know, circulate it throughout the house. Uh, certainly some advantages to that are that on the front end, it's very uh, cost, cost effective, of course. Um, and you can still, you can work some efficiencies into it by having uh, intelligent controls that monitor for outdoor conditions like humidity and temperature. But, you know, at the end of the day, the air is still fairly unconditioned as you're bringing it in. And you're also utilizing an HVAC fan uh, to do it, which is not necessarily the most uh, efficient way to bring that air in from outside. So you keep moving a little bit more and, and we get to power supply ventilators, a uh, pretty common product in the, in the building community. And that's where we've got you know, uh, fans in a box <laughs> for lack of a better term, but they operate efficiently. Yeah. Some of them have pre-filters on them. Some of them can again be, you know, designed to uh, pass the air through a filter that's already in the home, but either way you're getting a, you're getting that filtration benefit there. Uh, you're getting a more efficient fan. Um, so you're, you know, you're keeping your energy goals in, in a positive place. You can once again, still untie it to any of that intelligent uh, ventilation that you might already uh, have th through a control system in the home. Um, it can be conditioned as it's as it's brought in. That would be true with the dampered system too. So you know, if your air conditioner's heater is on, you can condition that air so that it's not coming in raw into the living space. You go up a little bit more, and we start to get to balanced solutions. Um, ERVs and HRVs would, would certainly be the highest end of that. That's where you know you're taking those two air streams and you're crossing them, and you're trying to um, manipulate the amount of uh, moisture and heat and uh, cool air that are lost during that yeah. transfer. There's obviously, you know, if there's one negative to ventilation, it's the same. I mean, if you open the window in the middle of winter, you're going to bring a lot of cold air in. you got some fresh air in, but you know, now you got to heat that air. So again, with controlled ventilation, we're trying to manage that so that when that air is brought in, we're having a minimal impact on the other attributes 
um, a via Q, one of which is obviously temperature uh, and of course humidity. So yeah, I think that's why ventilation as simple as it sounds can end up being one of the more uh, complicated attributes that we talk about, not, not just to consumers, but even to people in the trade. I mean, you know, there's a, a lot that goes on um, with making sure that the correct solution is in you know, the correct type of house based on the tightness of that house, uh, based on the size of that home, and you know, based on the performance of the main central HVAC system that's in that house. Uh, another form of, of ventilation, you know, also obviously exhaust, uh, bath fans, range hoods are considered a form uh, of ventilation. And that is where you're, you know, the air that's in the house is getting exhausted out. When you do that, air will make its way uh, back into the home. I, I mean, you know, we don't, our homes are getting yeah. tight, but there's always air filtration somewhere. Uh, we haven't we haven't quite gotten to a complete Ziploc bag yet, so we're getting pretty close. But so you know when you've got that aspect of it, the only, the the negative there is that you know you're getting a negative pressure environment then, and that air is just once again we've got uncontrolled air when it comes into the home. So we're controlling how we get it out with exhaust, but we're not controlling how it it comes in, and it's going to come in wherever there's a leak in the envelope. Um, yeah. So you know that's why. Uh, as a company, we, we recommend supply or balanced ventilation solutions as, as the best way to go. Um, you know, whether that's a retrofit or, or in a new home. Yeah, in, in most climate zones, that really works because you're, you're creating a slightly positive pressure within the house with that supply air ventilation. But also what I like about your product is during the shoulder seasons, uh, it, it allows for uh, de dehumidification at the same time. And I know we're going to talk about dehumidification in a separate uh, topic, um, but you know, that, that's one of the, that's, that's one of the things I like about your product, not bringing that raw air in. Um, yes, you can filter it out, but if you're not adjusting for the humidity at the same time, then that's an issue. You can actually create a very humid environment during the, the spring or fall, depending on if, if you're in a humid climate zone. Yeah, exactly. We do, we do have some solutions that tie dehumidification into the ventilation process and there's definite advantage to that. And there's, there's areas where you really need that, where even a, you know, a balanced solution, um, it's not going to be able to, re to, con to remove enough of that humidity to truly mm -hmm. condition the air before it's brought in. And yeah, as you say, the shoulder season for, you know, for those of you who don't know what the shoulder season is, that's when you're not, um, you know, you're not running that air conditioner because it's, it might be, you know, it's comfortable enough outside that you don't need that, but you still have high humidity, um, you know, especially as you get further down south. So that air might be a comfortable temperature, but it's not a good humidity. And, you know, as you know, as we get these tighter homes, if you bring in highly humid air, uh, you're not just talking about comfort issues anymore. I mean, you're talking about significant um, health problems as, as far as mold. Absolutely. We, we do not want to introduce moisture into a tight envelope um, ever. So. Well, I do appreciate this information, Joseph. This is a very good topic to cover. This is especially relevant now. And if you're watching this video in 2025 and 2020, there was a pandemic. Uh, we we're all forced to be inside. We all smelled each other. We realized how bad indoor air quality was. So ventilation was a solution that we talked about to bring fresh air in. Uh, and again, this is these are strategies that you don't just use in a pandemic. And I think that's where a lot of people are confused like hey we need we need fresh air to get all the viruses out it's like no we we need fresh air regardless yeah. humans need oxygen uh we need to get rid of co2 with within the house that fresh air helps bring some of those, those fresh fresh oxygen supplies into the house but also gets rid of some of the the, the pollutants i can tell you from a you know from a marketing standpoint you know when we really look at the impact of the pandemic it, it hasn't had a big um it, it hasn't changed the talking points of, of our products or a whole lot about uh, the way that they operate. It's just changed which of those bullet points are brought to the top. Yeah. Well, with filtration, you know, it was, it was typically allergies and asthma because those were the people that were primed and, and ready to make that purchase. They understood the impact of that air. Same with ventilation. It was, you know, it, it was sold to a group who understood the importance of it uh, because they, they understood the health risks associated with formaldehyde off gassing. And the fact that, you know, when you, when you spray, different cleaners all over your home it, it hangs in the air and so th those issues were there as you said before the pandemic they'll be there after the pandemic so and and there'll there'll be new viruses that can come into the house so you know uh, of course we like to say the you know the awareness has increased uh, but the importance hasn't increased the importance has always been there and will always be there so. well we need to breathe and if you enjoy <laughs> this topic uh, i've also talked to joseph about several other topics including humidity uh dehumidification 
and also filtration. I've got links to those videos in the, the description below. Uh, thanks again, Joseph, for your time. And um, really do appreciate this information. Thank you, Matt. All right. Well, if you enjoyed uh, Joseph's uh, discussion, please give him a thumbs up. And we've loaded up some additional videos off to the right-hand side. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you guys next time.